नमस्कार डियर सिस्टर्स एंड ब्रदर्स इट हैज बीन वेरी प्रोडक्टिव फ्यू आवर्स ऑफ माय स्टे एट डीजे पार्क तिरुपुर I do admire your sacrifice for coming despite of so many inconveniences and participate returning back home you will notice even greater changes that will happen and unfold in your day to day life because of this three meditation center sessions we had tomorrow i'll be leaving early in the morning but my heart will always remain here and i intend to come back hopefully on on 11 11 <laughs> I was invited by Sri Vinayak Garu of Chennai Silks who participates in this international peace day. So he says 11th October I'm sorry 11th November at 11 in the morning at 11 minutes later we will sit and offer prayers for the world peace. पूज्य बाबू जी महाराज एडवाइज वन सिंपल थिंग एंड ही रोट अ लेटर टू यूनाइटेड नेशंस इन 1956 और 54। ही रोट टू यूनाइटेड नेशंस एंड सेड वर्ल्ड पीस इज नॉट पॉसिबल अनलेस एंड अंटिल इंडिविजुअल पीस इज ग्रांटेड एंड हु कैन ग्रांट द इंडिविजुअल पीस no one but yourself no one can give you a gift or the blessings of peace in the heart it's an individual attitude a person under turbulence of problems in life can remain unshaken and person without any sort of problems remains stressful and anxious these are all individual nature our path the heartfulness way it's a gift from the divine directly because through this transmission all those willing participants are able to experience minimum level of peace and there is no limit to what can happen next as we evolve in the beginning while we are in the pind pradesh before attaining the state of liberation within this life itself just as restlessness has its contradiction with peace and contentment just as anger and love coexist just as courage and fear coexist just as confusion and clarity coexist but after attaining state of liberation there are no contradiction the peace that we attain after liberation within this lifetime has no contradiction this is something to be understood well because the ultimate peace within before liberation while we are at atma chakra is very deep and unparalleled but as you go higher and higher going beyond the ninth chakra where the humility develops and unfolds the peace that we attain has no contradiction to it there is no opposition 
So I wish and pray that we may all attain this. There is no other solution. There is no point asking, begging, praying for peace and contentment and liberation. It's in our hands. If you don't deserve it, no God can give you that. No Guru can grant you that if you don't deserve it. So our only job is to make ourselves the deserving individuals. According to Babuji, how can one become so deserving so that he or she becomes the walking temple of God in whose heart God can reside? God should become proud and say, I reside in such and such a person's heart. And the only way is to make our heart pure and simple without any complications. Moment you put a desire in front of God, you have already insulted God. Moment you ask even for liberation, you have already insulted God. Ask for nothing. Prepare yourself in deserving. And only way one can prepare oneself in this deserveration is by becoming more and more of less and less, become purer and simpler. Now I'll change the topic and share something which most people have not understood this concept, which Babuji in the very first chapter of Reality Dawn mentions, the chapter on religion. I think somewhere along there is an aberration or not a perfect translation. It is translated as where religion ends, spirituality begins. Where spirituality ends, reality begins. Where reality ends, bliss begins. And when bliss ends, we don't know where we are heading into. There is nothingness. But there is no ending of it, anything. There is only transcendence. There is a big difference between ending of anything and transcendence of a thing. It's like moving from one dimension to another dimension. It's like you want to catch a flight from Coimbatore. There are no flights from Tirupur, so you have to make a road transport from Tirupur to Koyambutu and then take a flight. The dimension of travel changes. Similarly, in the field of religion, we begin with simple things, with simple belief, simple trust, simple faith in God and say, yes, my Lord, you are there. We should not remain satisfied with this belief. Belief has a purpose. If God is there, please God help me have your darshan. And this darshan is not visible. Even if God appears in the physical form, we will never be able to recognize. Take for example, in Mahabharat, Lord Krishna shows the Vishwaruk Darshan to Arjun. He can't figure out what is going on. In fact, he becomes very fearful and he says, please return back to that friendlier form. So, physical Darshan will never appeal to your heart. Experience can appeal to your heart. Anubhuti, Anubhava can appeal to your heart. So we pray to God, My God, I don't even know you. Please help me 
experience your presence and with that attitude we meditate with the hope that one day we will experience that so we move away from the belief based religious system into spirituality where we expect some experiences having experienced some inkling some a sense of divinity in our heart we still remain unsatisfied because though knowledge may be great belief may be great experiences are better but experiences are also not everything though they are better than knowledge and belief what is lacking with this experience is the process of becoming It's a difficult concept to understand but if i give you a small example that if i come or if you are well treated in your friend's house who is very wealthy very rich man and you spend 3 months in that house enjoying very generous hospitality then you will say wow my friend is so rich he is so generous and having all this rich hospitality i am enjoying this this experience is great but deep down in your heart you will be thinking i wish i was also as rich i would also as wealthy there is nothing wrong with this feeling divine experiences can be great but to become divine is yet another matter so we should not be satisfied with experiences also and we will never be satisfied even if you want to or don't want to it has its own nature until we become divine your heart will always remain in a state of discontentment and later on this bliss we call sat chit anand is so heavy you will say goodbye to it also i don't want this even becoming divine becomes too much for you and that's when we do the actual renunciation and say goodbye to that condition renunciation does not mean leaving your home and running away from your family's responsibilities it's actually the biggest sin in our sahaj mark system because you're not grateful to your parents you're not grateful to your family and the ungratefulness is the or ingratitude is the biggest sin when your parents expect you to serve in their old age and you run away from that responsibility it's a, it's a biggest crime you can say not just a sin so family life is very important for us service and sacrifice in a family life prepares us it makes us it makes us stronger trials and tribulations are necessary in this life otherwise against what will you exercise physically we exercise the lifting weights and going to gym and doing all sorts of muscle building exercises it needs challenge it needs tension to build muscles mind also becomes stronger and able only when it faces the challenges in life spirituality also more the challenges faster you become saintly that does not mean we should invite problems it will come as and when needed we should not pray that all the world's problem may come to me 
that will be foolishness. Lead a life of acceptance. If it comes, well and good. Continue with practice and evolve. Only purpose of this life is the evolution. Becoming better from a mere human level to humane, which is packed with human qualities, and then having mastered and having become a paka, a good human being, we automatically are pushed by nature to become divine. But we have to let go of our certain habits. Recognize your defect and try to get rid of them with prayers. Thank you.